Now, it's been a big week in television. Two major stories to talk about with our media panel this morning. Media commentator Brian Edwards, listener columnist Bill Ralston, and our guest this week, South Pacific Pictures chairman John Barnett, is also with us. John Barnett has worked in New Zealand television and film since the 70s. Outrageous Fortune and Shortland Street are two of his biggest TV hits, and he's also produced films like Whale Rider and Sione's Wedding through South Pacific Pictures. So let's start with MediaWorks, which went into receivership on Monday. MediaWorks has three new directors on board to turn it around when it comes out of receivership. First, Judy Christie, former head of iWorks and a long-time and very experienced producer of television. Also, Australian Martin Dalgleish, a former director of the Australian company PBL. He has a strong background in new media. And then there's lawyer Rod McGeoch, the chair of Sky City and the man who got Sydney the 2000 Olympics. John, if I could start with you, what do you make of this trio? Are they the right mix? Well, I don't think that the board will only be three people. There'll be more to be appointed. And it starts with the chairman, who uh, is somebody who's going to keep the bankers happy. But I think the key person uh, at the moment is going to be Julie Christie. And that's for a couple of reasons. First of all, she's here. And secondly, more than the bankers, she knows about television. But thirdly, what I think she'll do, which has been very much lacking in the New Zealand television landscape, I think she'll be a champion for free-to-air television. And free-to-air television has lacked a champion. You haven't seen anybody from TVNZ get up and say, this is a great medium. And you haven't seen anybody from TV3 do it for some time. In fact, I think you have to go back to Julian Mounter to find somebody who really championed free-to-air television. So I see Julie as, as very much a, a defender of free-to-air and local content. And well, I think her reputation, to some extent, perhaps unfairly, has been of producing rather down market things and uh, importing stuff from overseas. Is that relevant in all of this? Uh, I don't think so, because actually she's created a number of shows and she's always made shows that reflect a, a part of New Zealand. And I think that um, that's something that she really enjoys and, and understands. And for that reason, I think she'll, she'll be out front about this. John, you see her as a real driving force in, in the new TV3 and the new media works as a whole. Where do you think she's going to take the company? Um, I think that the job of, of, of this board, uh, because they're not the owners, they represent the owners, uh, is going to be to give it a stable footing and to possibly, well, hopefully, to grow it. But I don't think they're going to grow it by getting a lot more cash in. If they had more cash in, I think they could do a lot more things. She's on the board, though. And people talk her about, uh, about her taking a more hands-on role. That's almost an executive role. You know. Do that's, you see her as an executive director? I, I do think that that's what will happen. I mean, that's happened at TVNZ. You may remember Roseanne was both uh, Roseanne chair. Mayer. Yeah, Roseanne Mayer was chair and the chief executive for a period of time. Wasn't necessarily a good thing to do that. And it's better to have separation. Mm. But this board does not have a lot of other television experience. Looking at this from the outside, it all seems just a bit too easy. You know, here you have this company that owes $700 million. Uh, nothing's going to change, we're told. Everybody's jobs are safe. So it'll be, you know, the recipe as before. It, it's a bit hard to believe that that's going to be the case. I think the, the key is nothing's going to change in the short term. And uh -huh. the important thing is to give credit, uh, to give, um, uh, support to the to the creditors and to the staff and to make everybody feel and and accept that they're not going to lose their jobs and that all the bills are going to be paid and uh, what happens in six months time might be different. Ryan Gaynor argued in the Saturday Herald that there was really no need for receivership that it was really a capital restructuring and it was done as a device to try and avoid a potential 22 million dollar tax bill. What would you think of that? Well, I disagree with Brian on that because the tax bill uh, is part of a much, much wider tax case and there's a lot of companies bound up in this, but there hasn't been a, a, a ruling on it yet. And I think that um, the government and the receivers have both said yeah. that there would have to be some discussions about tax, but that liability will lie with the previous um, owners. It won't, it won't lie with the new people. So is the, the television viewer going to see anything different? Uh, I, would think in, I would think in the short term, uh, they may not. <laughs> and that's what saying makes in the like, short term. That, yeah. That's what makes um, the News and Current Affairs team slightly nervous, particularly with um, Julie Christie involved, because she's a woman who, you know, television has to make money. Now, sometimes some of our News and Current Affairs brands struggle with that. 
Is, are the news and current affairs teams right to be a little bit nervous about this? I, I don't think so, because it's true that Julie does want things to be profitable, but she also comes from a sports journalist background and from a journalist background. And I, and I think anybody who knows about television actually knows that you have to have a strong news machine. And in fact, in many ways, I think she'll be more of a supporter of the news than um, if you'd just had the accountants running that. But to come back to my question, are we going to see anything different? I don't think you are in the short no. term. And part of that is also because of the program um, supply arrangements yep. that they've got. I mean, all these already are in place. Mm. There's a very, very large inventory of programming waiting to be seen. There's commitments with New Zealand on air and commitments for scheduling, so I don't think that will, you know, go. OK, let's turn to the other development this week. Sky Television has lost its rights to the English Premier Soccer League. Here's Tim Martin of Coliseum Sports Media, the successful bidders. Kiwis can watch all this content. When, how and where they want to. Crikey, is this a game changer, do you think, for you know, the sports rights industry? It's the beginning of the change of the game. Um, these guys are taking in products pre-produced from abroad and running that in, the, in terms of um, um, English soccer. They will expand, I'm sure, into other areas. But in terms of being able to, say, bid for the rugby rights here in New Zealand or the league or the cricket or the netball, I think they're a long, long way away from that. Yeah, see, John, a lot of people have said, you know, we'd really like to see some competition for, from, from, uh, from Sky. Uh, but in the end, the consumer, again, is just going to be paying more money. I agree. That's because right, I it? think that, that people will take this package and I don't think a lot will give up a Sky package. They may give up something like the Rugby Channel, they may give some, something at the Fringe, but I think they'll be more inclined to take both. Mm. And, and I think that, uh, that you're right. I think you'll see them go after sport like golf, like motor racing, like uh, NBA, all of those things that have got small audiences they will be able to deliver much more efficiently. But, but all of this is tied into broadband and there hasn't been a huge take-up of broadband in New Zealand to date and it's very expensive. So you're back to money again, aren't you, for the consumer? Well, you are, but this might be something that helps the, the government, actually, um, because there just hasn't been that demand for broadband. Are we, are we yet at that stage of being a broadband uh, TV-watching nation? No, we're not, are we? We're quite a way away still. We are. Mm. We are quite a way away. The other thing, though, is that it, I noticed both TV3 and TVNZ give away on-demand content. Now, that's got to be a lunatic strategy, I well, would have thought. You're, you're giving away your product. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. And Shortland Street's a good example. Um, in a, thir a three-month, 13-week window, 35 million people watch Shortland Street on free-to-air and less than a million watch it on-demand. On and if you watch it between 7 and 7.30, there's seven minutes of ads mm. which generate the most amount of money in a half hour on, on TV2. If you watch it at 7.30 on, on demand, there's two minutes of ads at a giveaway price. Why you know, wouldn't, wouldn't you just charge You have a big vested interest in this, don't you? Really? Well, uh, but I think it's, it's symptomatic of everything that's yeah. happening. That you say there's a million people free. watching it on demand, mm. yeah. charge them each a buck to download it. I mean, that, that's a hell of a lot of money. Uh, it's free. No, but if you did, if you started charging... Oh, yes, I don't, I'm not sure... Well, it's already available at 7, seven o'clock for you. Yeah. Uh, we'd love to, to see those people. <laughs> Although that's over a three-month period, so yeah. it actually isn't enough money. I, I think that they, uh, the networks in other countries have charged for on-demand uh, and catch-up, and I think that Has TVNZ it missed it. Yep, yep, yep. TVNZ missed an opportunity there, I think. Coming back to, to Bill's point, are New Zealanders going to buy into this, do you think? The soccer? Well, and, and whatever proceeds later on from the I soccer. Think, I, think they, I think you don't have to have the numbers that you need on free-to-air or on mm. subscription television. You could have um, 40, 50,000 people, and that would be enough. OK, John Burnett, uh, Brian Edwards and Bill Ralston, thank you for your time this morning.